All right, so in this stage, I have now uh, converted the recording of the screen capture that I did just earlier, and I've saved it over to um, uh, an encoded uh, WMV, a uh, Windows Movie Format. Now, I need to convert that to something else like AVI or image sequence. And in this case, I'm using um, PowerDirector from Cyberlink, which is my uh, favorite video editor that I'm using most of the time for my tutorials. And um, what I, I've done here is simply loaded that uh, original encoding. All right, so now it's time to step in. And um, not the whole thing is going to be of value, because as you remember, this was a quick introduction of what uh, Verve is and how it works in principle. And then uh, we go into maybe exploring some particulars. So I'm going to go and crop. I'm going to split this side and have a small portion of it really of value here where it gets dark. And we have that initial segment going. And I think this part, this part here is really interesting. I'm going to use that. Perhaps one yes. more until it blows that side. Okay, something like that. So I'm going to go split it here. This part is the one I want to keep. And the one here on the left I can delete. So let's hit the delete key and zoom uh, or shift everything down. Take the last one, delete that one too. And um, let's go and zoom in a little bit here. And one thing I want to also do is actually convert this to an AVI file because I want to show you in Dog Waffle how if you have it not as an image sequence but rather as a single file, like an AVI file, how you can still uh, decide to use just part of it and one thing also you don't need the audio track so let's right click on this and unlink the video from the audio here i'm going to select the audio after it's been unlinked and delete that and so now we have just the video track and that's the one we want to render out so let's go to produce something with that such as an avi um, it's actually, you know what, we don't need the whole video. Let's go back to edit and perhaps crop to the part we really need. So I'm going to go and double click that. It's actually a couple of ways we can do that. We could mask it, we could crop it. You know what, let's not do that. Let's go, um, let's go to, uh, to crop instead. Uh, so I'm going to select this and you know, you could resize it. That's not what we want. We want to crop to the central part here. Um, so let me see if I remember where that tool is. I don't do much cropping on, uh, it's maybe on the modify, on the trim, fix in hands, something like that. Video, that's not it. Modify. No, that's the one where it's gonna go. Do we have a crop option here somewhere? Maybe with the mask. Well, mask is going to put an alpha layer on it and mask some of it to be transparent. I don't think that that's where I'm going with this. I really want to crop it. And I know there is a crop feature. I just don't remember where it is because I don't use it that much. Um, I usually crop inside of dog waffle, but uh, I wanted to see if there's a way, probably here with the effects room. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Crop, style, text masking, visual. Still nothing here. Okay, so maybe it's as simple. Oh, maybe it's as simple as, um, you know, let's go back to the regular display here. And ah, that's what it is, I think. If I take, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I, if I preview it here, it detect scenes and this one here is what, edit using content that we're editing. Now, if I, if I, if I click it to preview it here, double click it here, that, no, that will open it in the current viewer. That's not it either. Uh, oh wait, oh, was it? Double click it from All here. All right, perhaps. so now it's time to step will into play it. Verve. This could and be a crop option here. Yes. Seek uh, by we'll start right there. Come on. Now it's time to. <laughs> you know, normally I would uh, do the smart thing, which is to uh, to play uh, use the function key F1. Let's see F1 here. Let's see if that gives us. Ah, there it is. Let's see if we have a crop function here. Search for crop. <laughs> And it's on the power tools. That makes sense. Cropping images. 
Okay, cropping images. All right, so we have it either here. Cropping images. Crop image. We click the crop image button. Okay. And there's also power tools. Video crop. There you go. Okay. All right, so power tools. There it is. Select that. Ah, oh, of course I've seen it. I go there all the time to change the video speed. All right, so video crop. Um, we want to crop to a portion, but we want to indicate exactly what part. And so we need to identify. How come we can't identify the parts that we want to crop to? We really need to, okay, select this option to crop or zoom in on a specific portion of the video clip. The question is, what portion is that? We need to select. That's not it. No, that's the play. Okay, so crop. Click on crop video, maybe. Ah, there it is. <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so here we get, to, that's exactly what I wanted, is to, to choose the portion of the video that I want to, to crop on. Okay, and so, especially towards the end, when we actually have that flow, that fluid going with the white there. From about here, we'll see when the white is going. Okay, that's the part I want to crop to. I want to make sure that one is properly framed. So. Let's go place it around here and and then crop it. Right? And I don't know if that's big enough or too small. Let's just leave it like that and you can always resample it or resize it to something different. All right, so we have that crop going and uh, let's see what that looks like. Because yeah, now we don't waste much of the, perfect. Here we don't waste much of the animation to the user interface and everything around it. Right? That was what I wanted to do to avoid. Um, you can still make it smaller if you want to here. But let's keep it at that. So that will be that will be our, our size. Now maybe we need to um, to produce the video as um, could be a movie file, a QuickTime, could be MPEG, and then you know use QuickTime to convert it to image sequence. But this time I, I'm going to go with uh, AVI. Uh, not that it really has many choices or options here, it just has the DV. I guess I don't have the other codecs there. So it's just going to be um, some sort of a digital video and we know that didn't work last time because uh, I don't know why. Um, so still not sure that that's really going to be the working way. Let's do this. Let's save it out as a movie. Uh, that we know we can use and we'll go to the codec. That's about the right aspect ratio. That still is uh, an aspect ratio of uh, 16 to 9 roughly here. So I'm going to go with this. I'm going to say 4 megapixels, megabit per uh, second. Mbps should be uh, OK. And um, let's go and put that into our verve and number 3 and produce 0. There, that'll be the name and uh, there'll be a produce zero to move. So it'll be a movie file and uh, let's record. All right. All right, and so here we go uh, back in the folder where we had the earlier trees also and here's our produce zero movie. Double click that to open it. This one's actually configured by default to play in, uh, oh, Windows Movie Player, uh, Media Player. Let's go to QuickTime instead. Open with Uri avec uh, QuickTime Player, there you go. All right, that's a movie, uh, 640 by 360. Let's see also control I will tell me what the frame rate is, 29. Okay, that's good. And yeah, I think with that we can, uh, we can create a nice series. This part here would be very useful. Uh, I'm gonna try the ones in the back here. Let's get about from here when this blast comes in. Okay, something like this. All right, so remember the bottom, let's stop the animation. The bottom here allows you to set the in and the out marker. The out marker will be in this case around here, or let's go all the way to the end. The in marker will be around here. There you go. Uh, Control X will cut this away. 
Control A selects everything that's left. Delete key deletes it. And we are left with an empty viewer. Control V will paste the one we cut away. And so now we have this part and just that part. And that we can save now in a couple of places. We've seen it exported to um, image sequence, but this time I'll export it to, shame on me, to AVI. Um, so <laughs> why not? Should work too. And uh, there are some interesting things we can do with that uh, on the dog waffle side. So let's save, save, this, as, uh, save this as a AVI and set the options. No sound. There is no soundtrack. Uh, for the compressor, we could go with uh, uncompressed or one of the DV. Those I'm not really sure how well they work. So let's go with out compression for starters and millions of colors. That's the one. All right. Now, again, this is going to be a fairly large file, um, but, but should be manageable. And the thing about it is I really wanted to show you what to do when you have a large file and you really can't display it. Uh, or load it in memory, but you can select a portion of it. So here is this animation as an AVI file. And now let's go to Dog Waffle to load that animation as an AVI file. Uh, so this thing here we probably want to keep handy just in case we need to go back to that. Um, and where is my AVI? Let's go load the AVI file. And it's right here on the verve, chapter 3. And there it is. Now, that's exactly what I wanted to show you. We haven't loaded the AVI yet, but we see the first frame and we see the last frame. And you can scrub through that to select what part of that video you actually want to load into Dog Waffle. That is absolutely beautiful. I think this is really a great feature. Very quickly identify, okay, I need to get it from about here. Or maybe from here, we're gonna have this initial cold air blow right into this here so from here that'll be the in the first frame and then the last frame about this much right so let's load that that's going that's going to be 259 frames open that and we are done so we have this video now loaded this started in verve verve at this point does not have the ability to render that out to an avi file or to an animation altogether uh, so what I used is the screen capture software to actually capture that as it was uh, evolving and doing its animation uh, or its painting. And uh, I end up having this animation in Dog Waffle. And uh, so now you can do a lot of things with that. Uh, first of all, of course, uh, store it so that we can play with that um, in a couple of different ways. For instance, one thing you might say, well, okay, I'm going to need a portion of that from about here. Right? Again, in marker till about here, out marker, right click, delete the block, you've, you've selected a portion, oh no, that's not what I wanted, I don't want to delete that block, <laughs> oh, alright, just click here to restore the whole thing, that's why we have that, that's exactly where the workflow is saved, alright, so what we need is from about here, there, from about here, that's the end of the part we need to delete. Let's go to the first. That's the start of it. Right click that, the part we can delete. All right. And then we have it all the way till about, let's say, till about here, in, till about there, out, delete that stretch, that block. So we are left with 134. And remember how many we had on the clouds or the animation early on. We had. Uh, 88, I think, or 100. We normalize it to 100. Um, so this one here. So what we'll do is we'll make this one now. We'll, we'll blend it into 100. And we could do that with uh, motion prediction, or we could do that. Let's do it with the uh, simpler with this one here. Uh, time stretch. Right? And bring it down to 100. Just to have an exact match. That always helps. Makes it a little bit more predictable as to when one part is going to stop while the rest is continuing on. Uh, and store this one. Let's say uh, store this one here to memory or, or to disk. And so now we have a nice little animation here. Um, this one here. No, that's not the one. Where is it? Where did it go? The first one is looks like this. Oh, no, it does. Yeah, that's the one. OK, uh, there's this one here also, but it starts before that. There you go. That's the longer version. OK. So let's go grab this one 
and we have stored it and we can designate it as the swap image All right then we can go and switch back to this one that's our good old friend that we had created earlier with the sky just moving without much turbulence on it just that large high resolution image that was loaded into the brush and then with the brush keyframe are animated to move in a linear fashion from left to right diagonally so click on that and that will restore the animation and let's just double check how many frames we had in that one sure enough exactly 100 and this one also had 100 and it's the animation it's the swap image now animate a swap image so because we selected it here so if we combine the two right here we see them both in a multiply mode by default but it could be something else we don't want to combine them though we want to composite or we want to displace all right so what we do is go to filter and displace by swap and let's do the regular one first displace okay so now you see that displacement that comes in here originally from verve is now affecting and displacing the uh, the image that we are animating on the dog waffle side let's apply that all across it's subtle but it's there it's very subtle but it's definitely there okay hopefully you can tell uh, let's go and restore this and try something else let's go filter uh, displays cloaking displays that one is a bit probably not so well it could be useful but uh, let's see yeah it, it has some some validity there let's go back to the original and displays now by one more pool displays ah I have a good old pool displays that's gonna look interesting that's gonna look like there is some streams or something really interesting happening all right let's go a little bit like this and apply that look at that now here we have some nice notice this turbulent behavior right there that's what I'm talking about now we have verve displacing dog waffle right that's exactly what's happening and I, I I hope you you realize what that means I mean there's some really great combination of different types of software for uh, even more different types of artwork um, so let's say let's see where we can take that let's go and uh, restore the original and do yet another one displays a uh, jitter displays now that one I don't know it's it's a little bit different it does basically a jittery thing um, hard to see exactly you know it, it gets displaced well it gets jittered all across there and it, that's actually one that you could use perhaps to show some eros uh, erosion on steep walls on a, on a mountainside uh, but if, if you look at you know the details of it it looks it looks very difficult to really visualize there or use in a way it could be um, some sort of a flock of bees or something in a, in a distance uh, not my thing let's go back to the original and see one more uh, displays by color world displays color twirl displays that is all right so that one is interesting too okay let's animate well hold on yeah there's definitely some interesting things showing here let's go apply that oh look at that look at that look at that turbulence happening here all right so we have combination of two videos here now we have one video that's the original sky movement in the back there with the clouds and then we have a video that's this incoming displacement from verve and those two now are being combined like that and so i think i'm going to start using this here i'm going to i'm going to store this one and the others I'm all going to minimize or delete them I don't care about those anymore at this point uh, this probably don't need it well of course I regret I'm sure we would probably have wanted to put that animated palm tree in front of it all but uh, let's focus on this though let's focus on the uh, animation that combines by displacement right and first of all let's increase the contrast a little bit let's go uh, dynamic range there you go use the full dynamic range that itself will really bring it out also uh, and why not use that as an elevation map in 3d 
right? Let's go, or, or for instance, uh, another thing you could use with that is uh, add some uh, edge detection on that, color embossing. Uh, that will also quite often look some really interesting. Uh, in fact, you could uh, make this uh, an animation. Let's do this, let's animate this. Oh, wait, I didn't. Let's go turn this uh, embossed, color emboss. There you go. Oh, this one doesn't do the whole animation across the entire series. Okay, so what I need to do is actually do that in the uh, timeline. In the timeline, you have many of the same filters, but keyframeable. So I'm going to go to Convolve, Color Emboss. There you go. And you can adjust how much of that, and you could also change it. Let's just keep it all the same, but it's applying it across the frame sequence. That's what I was looking for. And now turn the spherize on that so we have an animated planetary, uh, you know, like uh, clouds, like Jupiter's, you know, like like parts of clouds, they're animated. So where's my uh, sphere eyes? Oh, that's actually right here. Filter, no need to go in the timeline here. Transform sphere eyes. There you go. And you can see here, if we move the planet, if we move the sun in front, let's make it point lights uh, or directional. You know, point lights is probably supposedly better. Uh, let's give it a little bit of this, a little bit of ambient, a little bit of blue haze, um, and change the size, uh, distance of the light sources. Gosh, there's so many things to experiment with here. Uh, specularity, maybe none of it, or just a tiny little bit. Um, Scale of our terrain. No, we don't want the terrain to show like that. Bump. Uh, you know what? Let's do without texture. Just like that. Okay. And what else could we do? Well, that's pretty much it. Let's go apply it as an animation across the entire sequence. So now we actually have this entire flow spherized across the planet. And it starts to look like, you know, a telescopic view of another strange planet with some jet streams and some other fabulous stuff there. All right, so what else can we do? Um, let's go and store this one. I'm sure I'm going to save this one to a file at some point. Uh, let's go like this. All right, so uh, let's restore this one. Uh, instead of... Um, see what else could we do oh yeah elevation map let's turn this oh let's add some lighting to that so if you go to uh, artistic no a uh, stylized there lighting tool there you go now you have sort of a light source you can add here you can bring it closer you can make it less intense but still bring it closer uh, add uh, change the color of the light source uh, and then as you place the light source in different places here uh, you can also uh, make it more specular, make the surface look kind of plastic or wet. Uh, change the extrusion depth, uh, add some smoothness. Just beautiful, just awesome. Look at that. Uh, multiply uh, to the original and um, animate that across the whole sequence. So here we are looking at, I don't know, a flow of chocolate milk, or <laughs> it's like, it's looking a bit uh, different now, isn't it? Look at that. All right, so that's another way where you can take this. Uh, let's make this one actually, let's go slow it down with the motion prediction module. Let's go animate it, motion prediction module, and give it a dry run where we have three green frames per, and uh, force it to think a bit better and make it nice. So we have some nice uh, slowing down effect here. Let's go and perhaps add a little bit of sampling across some uh, neighboring images or perhaps, uh, I don't know, refinement pass. Uncheck the dry run and actually make it. So, so now it's rendering. It takes a little longer now because of the refinement pass. It, it wants to really do the best possible. Um, and um, But in the end, we will have an animation that will look just beautiful. Um, that was definitely worth the wait. 
and so I'll be back after that's done and then we'll take yet another look at how to use that this combination of displacement maps um, that were coming from Verve Painter and that we took into Dog Waffle to uh, create uh, even more sophisticated moving uh, place like, like here if you look at just this upper part here this almost looks like <clears throat> ocean waters with a little bit of wave activity and a very strong uh, I don't know, a tsunami or a flow of a river outlet or something, right? And there's some backlash waves and some really just beautiful. It's going slow now, but just wait until I turn this into perhaps a add, change the hue to kind of a bluish tint. And over here looks like the sun is being reflected. It's a top-down view from uh, from a, a bird's eye view. So uh, let's see what that looks like. Yep. Okay, so we go we go and this first frame we can delete usually at the end of after using the motion prediction module and what we'll do now here is change the hue of this so that will be under adjust the hue saturation value um, hue could be something like a, a bluish like this not so much saturation and the brightness also what do you think something like like that okay animate that across the whole sequence and for some reason it's a little bit choppy or slow here and I think I suspect it's because I'm doing too many other things I'm still rendering about three or four other or encoding a couple of other animations so what I'm gonna do is make this one shorter now and uh, frame blend time stretch with frame blending and bring it back down to oh let's bring it back down to a hundred why not with frame blending and then that way we have something that's a little bit smoother and um, we could also well let's 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 call this one done let's go store that there's tons of other things we can do with that but uh, let's call this one done let's um, now focus back on the original animation well not really the original the combination animation here and this time uh, make this an animation in which we actually look at this as an elevation map now before we do that let's check what is the animation in the swap it's still this one here the original from um <coughs> from uh from Swer from verve and what i'd like to do is actually have yeah let's let's use that as the color why not so we have this as an elevation map and i'm gonna go a uh, better contrast i'm gonna go expand the dynamic range in fact, I'm going to do even more than that. I'm going to use the filter uh, curve filter to adjust uh, kind of a plateau on the bright side and the plateau on the dark side. So we have a and may, maybe one or two levels in between that kind of plateau. So we get kind of a staircasing effect here, and the colors are going to be drastically falling off. Animate that all across. All right, so it's almost like a Grand Canyon that's moving forward here. Of course, if we play it backwards, it's going to look like it's receding due to erosion or whatnot. Um, <clears throat> the, in fact, uh, the, the other thing I also want to do is uh, uh, do a little bit of uh, uh, ghosting. Uh, let's do the ghost so that uh, it seems to be fading in time um, across a couple of frames there. So then that way it, it's not going to suddenly jump down or up, it's going to gradually get there. It gives it a little bit more smoothness in that color or brightness change. Um, the next thing I might want to do is add a little bit of uh, light diffusion so that the bright parts seem to be expanding into the dark parts a little bit more. Where is that photographic light diffusion? There it is. Okay, let's go and apply that light diffusion across the whole image sequence too. And I think with that, I, I should have an interesting uh, animation to use as a, um, uh, what do we call that, a uh, animated elevation map. Perhaps one more thing you can do is a directional blur, uh, like a motion blur. There it is, motion blur. And uh, so it would be, you know, here we can set the direction, but we want to make sure the angle kind of lines up roughly with the direction in which the flow is blowing. Right, and that way it gives us a little bit of kind of a streak that that makes sense to see because it's like wind generated displacement not too much though just a little bit 
And it'll be enough to, to just uh, trick us um, into thinking we're looking at the wind erosion or flow, maybe, uh, yeah, wind erosion of the mountains, because this is an elevation map very soon. So we now have something that we can store. Oops, there it is, animation, store to disk. And this is definitely what we will use as the elevation map. Uh, let's go and turn off any um, animated uh, swap. Let's see over here. Let's go turn that off. Let's erase it. In fact, let's make it white and make sure that if we click here, no, we still have one somewhere. So it must be one of those. That one's not it. Let's delete that. That one's not it. Maybe it's this one. Yep, there it is. Uh, <clears throat> there it is. Sorry, I made that too big. The use as animated swap. Let's uncheck that uh, because I want to make sure that we have this. Um, let's see, where is it? Right here. Well, let's make sure that we, we clear that so that uh, we don't have any image in the swap. It's just plain white. Right? And then that way, as we scrub through that, even if we combine with swap here, um, it's essentially not showing any change. It's multiplying to white and it stays the same. So now we have no coloring from the image itself. This is going to be simply an elevation map. In fact, if we don't want to be distracted by the fact that there's blue here or light sign or some other colors like slightly pink, grayish, what we'll do is we'll go to grayscale and do an expose through the lens and we'll say uh, exactly what kind of color we want for that, something like this. And it will go across the entire image sequence. So now we have an elevation map, bingo. That's a nice elevation map. And uh, it's nice because we modified it to make it look like there is not just a movement in this direction from the wind stream, but there's some very strong turbulence cutting in, uh, courtesy of Verve. And uh, then on top of that, we also have the, the motion blur. Uh, all of it just going to add to the impression that we have uh, maybe a, a big sand dune that's moving forward here or backwards. Let's reverse it, uh, reverse frames. So now we have that going away in the other direction, right? So um, let's see, instead of reverse, maybe we should have inverted it. So reverse it back and then invert it. Yeah, that's more like it. Okay, now the lower area, which is dark, is progressing and the higher areas which is white is uh, moving away as the wind blows it away all right that's what i'm looking for all right let's go and uh, store this animation of course every once in a while good idea every once in a while also actually a good idea to save it to file specifically right if you go animation save there you go or save avi make sure it's a lossless codec uh, then that way you can restore it if you have any reason to, re to restore it but at this point, let's go and store, uh, look at this with uh, the eyes of our ray tracer. Uh, under the filter transform, uh, let's go back to Puppy Ray, the CPU version first, just to enjoy that a little bit, because that's where it started in 9.0. And we ended up having, uh, you know, great, great fun uh, discovering that. And uh, soon enough finding that it would be nice to go real time with that with the GPU version. But still, this is great. Let's go click and ray trace. You can see that goes pretty fast. Let's go increase the quality a little bit on this render. Oh, now we can see it has to think a little bit here. And we can perhaps uh, go from high quality down to medium quality. Yeah, that's a good compromise. Now let's go to increase the filter to the max and ray trace. Okay, so it's gonna be, this is gonna be more like the sand dunes, right? Whereas if, for instance, if you go to uh, pre-filter zero, you have a very detailed, more uh, blocky nature here. Uh, skies, now that's not gonna make a difference until we actually uh, enable the global illumination, right? It, by default, it's this one here. And we can, now we see when we enable the global illumination, or also if we start looking up, we have the skies here and render that. And if you prefer to have uh, the sand dunes soft, we can increase the pre-filter here, maybe to 0.5 or 0.6. The default values usually are just perfect. Um, 
you see here there's still a little bit too much of the staircasing though so what we'll do is probably go up higher and then there's a few more things um, maybe a different sky there's actually one of this elevation map itself uh, that we had also copied into the brush or maybe not so much the elevation map but the one with the the sky image so that's this one here that's currently in the brush right so let's go say use that one and render with that and then that way we actually have a, a real photographic uh, picture. The other one was probably photographic too, but here's just another one. Um, and of course it's not seamless, so you can see the pole and the seam. Uh, that would be something we would need to do first. Um, let's see what else. Maybe look at it sideways and do a final render here. Let's have a, a reminder of how much time that takes. This is for one frame now. right? And so this is rendering on the CPU. It's not the latest and greatest. It's certainly not the fastest. It's an i7 second generation, and they are now out at fourth generation. So you can you can expect that this would at least render two or three times faster. Uh, everything being where it's gone, right? The speed of the RAM, the speed of the processors. Uh, it's it's quite likely that this would render uh, significantly faster on a uh, on today's latest version of uh, software but the thing is we can even here actually go uh, on today's version of hardware i mean this uh, we can actually go faster and to do that i'm going to use the gpu version so let me stop this and uh, once we have that stopped we can go call it done and restore the animation uh, or undo the this change we did on this just one frame and so this animation that's the one we want to work with right we have it here also we can see this actually bigger if you want to have a little preview of that and so now um, let's go and animate this in the gpu All right so filter transform puppy ray gpu version and so the the beauty of that is that uh, it is a bit more interactive uh, if i go to the preview mode or medium quality where it starts initially I can um, can expect that to to animate, and it is animating uh, each frame, which is not necessarily what I want quite yet. Um, so, what I should do is actually first find where the the main flow is coming in. You know what? Let me destroy the animations of the keyframes. Because that's distracting me right now and find out where it is going to flow so I probably need to change my camera view yeah here's the repetitive pattern you can see this element here is the same as this one here so it's probably going along that direction what I'm gonna do is uh, position myself right over this and then turn my head over, change, turn the camera over to look in this direction and then move down a little bit and into the scene and uh, it would be nice to have the light on the side so let me move the light sideways uh, there a little bit more of a side angle and also lower so that the angle the shadows are longer uh, then I'm gonna go to move the camera back a little bit until I'm just close to the edge. There you go. And something like that. So I suspect this will give me a good vantage point to see the uh, evolution of the, the terrain. But, but I want to uh, have it with the animation on each frame. Uh, but uh, actually, let me undo this. Let me reload the texture. There you go. So I'm starting from a clean slate. Now I can go into the predefined or previously uh, configured parameters. And here is where I might want to actually have a little bit of an animation. Let's do uh, animation uh, of each frame. Let's turn it off for now. And um, simply have something like this here. I'm going to go initially a little bit higher and looking down at it and position myself actually also a little bit more like this and then so that will be one keyframe and then the end of the animation will be uh, we will be lower 
But remember, the, the whole terrain is supposed to be, have moved away. So we'll probably be looking in this direction and the terrain will have moved further back there. Um, so let's do that and keyframe that. So we have the camera basically moving like that. The terrain, however, is blowing away in that direction, I think. Let's go and animate each frame so we actually make it so. And render that animation. We have uh, pre-filter, fog is good, uh, global illumination, everything's there. Let's set the quality to high quality. And uh, we have no change in pre-filter, illumination samples and so on. Let's go. So there it is. Now we see the movement of the waves pushing that terrain. Well, the camera is moving also ever so slightly, but the, the biggest movement is coming from the elevation map changing the elevation, I mean, the, the height map changing the elevation and the shape of the terrain as it's blowing away. And uh, that's uh, ultimately what I had in mind. Here we see that turbulence starting where it's way like twirling, uh, creating the twirly effects, which by the way, we could also use uh, dog waffle for to create the twirls. But sometimes it's nice to use something that's based on the CFD, uh, computational fluid dynamics. And there we go. So we have done this animation. Let's see what that looks like. There it is. Uh, let's uh, take a slightly better look here. Uh, remember the first frame is usually not useful. So let's delete it. Last frame is typically there too. We can use that and perhaps set the frames per second to 30. And if it plays too quickly, if, it, if, if it's gone in a heartbeat, you might want to add some motion interpolation there. Uh, animated motion prediction module. And let's go with three. Uh, don't need the refinement pass and just a quick test here. Let's go. So we now have about 300 frames. And that's that. We now have an animation of 3D terrain where the elevation map, excuse me, uh, an animation of a 3D terrain where the elevation map is the result of combining a real sky with um, animated displacement uh, based on computational fluid dynamics calculations done in, um, in Verve. All right. That was a long series. Thanks for watching.